Okay, so Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is here, and look, I had to go ahead and get this review. I've had the game for a while. I put in over 140 hours into it, and it's been one of the best Xenoblade games I've ever played. Now, I do have both a physical copy that I purchased as well as a review copy that came in after I purchased the physical copy, so it's like... Well, damn, now I got two copies of the game. <laughs> so, you know, that's one of the things that's kind of interesting. But anyways, uh, I, I, I wanted to let you guys know how great this game is. And we're going to talk about that and so much more. And basically, I really want to showcase how much I love the Zeno series because, you know, I have been with the Zeno series since the original Zeno Gears in 1998. Now, I can't find my copy of it. I was looking all over the house. But, you know, I've got the Holy Trinity here, which is the Zeno... <laughs> <laughs> you know, Zeno Saga Trilogy. Good luck if you can get your hands on this. I've also got the Collector's Edition for Xenoblade Chronicles X, which I absolutely love. This game, more people should play it, and I'm, I'm actually shocked that they haven't ported it. Um, I've also got the Collector's Edition for Xenoblade Chronicles, as well as Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And then I've got the, uh, I got some other stuff too, like a lot of collectibles. Because I do have the collector's edition for Zeno Gears as well. But basically, I'm showing you all this and talking about this because I'm a huge fan of Zeno, the, just the Zeno franchise. Tetsuya Takahashi is one of the greatest minds when it comes to gaming. And this series that he's, and this story rather, well, series slash story he's been trying to tell since 1998's Zeno Gears, which actually goes further back because Zeno Gears is supposed to be Final Fantasy VII. But it was deemed too dark. But anyway, uh, Tetsuya Takahashi and his wife, Sodia Saga, are some of my favorite game developers. And the fact that they continue to make phenomenal Zeno titles is absolutely just out of this world. But anyways, we're going to talk about this review for Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and why you should pick it up and more in this review. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So we're going to give the general gist of the story without diving into spoilers. And I want to do that mainly because I feel like if I were to go any further, it would just be like literally anything beyond the first hour is going to be spoiler territory. And I don't want to spoil it for anyone. So I will say that I I spent roughly 140 hours with this game before completing it, and it was one of the absolute best stories in the Zeno series that I've ever experienced, and it's full of, you know, constant surprises, callbacks to previous entries, and to other Zeno games, such as Zeno Gears and Zeno Saga, and is ultimately both a love letter to longtime fans and a welcome entry to new players that doesn't require new players to have knowledge of previous entries, yet it rewards you for having that knowledge if you do happen to possess that. Now, diving into the story of Xenoblade Chronicles 3, the world of Ionius is ripe with endless war as the two factions, Keeves and Agnes, battle for dominance. And here's the thing. If you're familiar with Xeno Gears, it's going to sound a lot like the two warring nations from Xeno Gears. So just keep in mind, and you know, for those, if you've never played Xeno Gears or Xeno Saga, don't worry about this part. But if you are a longtime fan, just keep in mind, Keeves and Agnes, they both mean lamb, surface dwelling lamb. There's a lot of callbacks to Tetsuya Takahashi's previous work, so do keep that in mind. But let's, let's get back to this review. We're introduced to our main character, Noah, who is an off-seer for Keeves, who is carrying a flute, who is off performing as a funeral rite sending for soldiers that have fallen in battle. Noah is then joined by his military brethren, Uni and Lons, and they eventually come across a mysterious man who's transporting what seems to be a egg-like device. We shift over to seeing another offseer in Mio and her compatriots Tyon and Senna of the opposing faction Agnes. These six eventually cross paths and with the mysterious egg-like device carried by that mysterious man who goes on to give them the ability of the Ouroboros. With the people of Ionius only having roughly 10 years to live and with the life forces of the dead, also known as their ether, feeding the opposing size flame clocks, the world of Xenoblade 3 is decidedly more bleak and dreary than the earlier entries on the surface. What will it take to end this war between Keeves and Agnes, and what secrets from the past may lead to a solution or potential ruin? 
If you play Xenoblade Chronicles, or more specifically Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and its expansion, Torna the Golden Country, then you'll be at home with a lot of the mechanics and intricacies of this game. There's no way that I could possibly cover all of the mechanics of the gameplay in a review that wouldn't be a little, you know, long in the tooth, so I'll just give you a general gist of it. You'll still get your turn-based real-time gameplay with menus that grow and expand as you progress through the game along with returning class systems from previous entries, while also gaining a few new mechanics such as the ability to switch classes and jobs for each of the characters which is a callback to what was available for your main character in Zenoblade Chronicles X. This level of customization of classes unlocks an endless number of possibilities for you to build out each of your characters. Yes, some characters are better suited to specific classes like healer, mage, tank, swordmaster, and the like, and the fact that you can custom build everyone allows you to experiment to your heart's content. Another aspect of what makes the classes special is the fact that they determine what the pace of battle is like. Mio has a starter class which allows her to stream together various arts together to rain down the pain on enemies, while Lanza's starter class is that of a burly tank with a great sword that switches between a shield with a turret and the ability to draw aggro, kind of like Ryan from Zombie Chronicles 1. And while Noah is your all-arounder with your most balanced arts and stats. I personally love how the game opens up as you progress with you unlocking new arts, abilities, classes, and characters in a way that feels much more akin to the way Xenoblade 1 did, which I enjoy the most of all the Xenoblade games. It's awesome how you will gain specific characters known as heroes that are the appointed leaders of various colonies scattered across the expanses of Ionius. As you complete their special quests, they will not only unlock, but also allow you to unlock further quest lines that add substantial depth to the already phenomenal story told in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. And speaking of the story told in Xenoblade Chronicles 3, I want to say that this is more akin tonally to Xenoblade Chronicles 1 than the more whimsical, oh, we can band together, we're friends tone of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Now, not saying that Xenoblade Chronicles 2 wasn't, you know, dark or good. It was a really great story. But if you started with Xenoblade Chronicles 1 and how that would just go from you know, nothing's happening to dark, to apocalyptically dark, to dire dark, to there's hope and then snuff out that flame of hope, then you're gonna feel at home with Xenoblade Chronicles 3 because it definitely harkens more towards that. And in many ways, as you go along, it starts to become, in my opinion, what is actually darker than Xenoblade Chronicles or Xenoblade Chronicles 2. The bleakness that you felt in Xenoblade Chronicles X, you're gonna feel that times a hundred in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. So there's that. I just wanted to let you guys know about that. Graphically, this is perhaps the best looking Xenoblade game that has released and from a performance standpoint is the best running in both docked and handheld mode with it not being played with the issues that were apparent in Xenoblade Chronicles 2 where that game has substantial drop in graphics down to 540p and even 360p in both handheld and docked modes before several patches helped fix those issues. In my time with the game, I never ran into any performance issues or frame rate dips or graphical hiccups as the game ran at a smooth 720p handheld and 900p when docked. If you have the Switch OLED, then this game really takes advantage of that gorgeous screen and just pops with its vibrancy. Roaming about the vastness of Ionius and seeing the expanse of the endless sea or the wonders of the night sky's bioluminescence or the remains of the dead bodies of titans is all just breathtaking and supremely good at visually showcasing the state of the world that we're in. The OST of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is honestly one of the most amazing in the series history that is only outclassed by the supreme wonder that is Xenosaga Episode 3, Thus Spoke Zarathustra. You will hear sweeping orchestral ecstasy that will invoke numerous emotions and are all fitting for the scenes that you're in be they cut scenes showcasing the horrors of war between the two nations, or if you're on your last stand in the midst of a tough battle with a boss or enemy that may be a higher level than you are. All in all, series composer Yoshinori Mitsuda is putting on some of his finest work here as he's been involved in every Xeno title since Xeno Gears. I will say that I was expecting to hear a new rendition of or a return of his finest works, such as One Who Bears Fangs at God or its Xeno Saga remix, Abel's Ark, but we don't get anything like that. 
The voice acting is once again top notch with outstanding performances from the main and supporting cast that are fitting for every moment they are in. And wrapping everything up, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is the best Xenoblade game in the franchise and sits right up there as one of the best Xeno titles in the overarching series. That answers a lot of questions for fans along with tying up loose ends left by previous entries and also links both directly and indirectly with Xeno Gears and Xeno Saga and fits right in with Perfect Work and Perfect Guide, which are Zeno Gears, Perfect Works, and Zeno Saga, Perfect Guide. If you are a Zeno fan, then you'll be rewarded for sticking with the series for all these years, if not decades. And if you're new to the franchise, then this will be a welcome entry point for you to get into one of the most immersive gaming franchises in the world. Do not sleep on this game. If you're able to get it, pick it up now because you never know when this is going to become another incredibly rare title for the Nintendo Switch. And that's it. That's the review for Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I know this is a different style of review. Like this is more like I didn't have an intro. I just jumped straight into the review just because I was so excited and you know, I, I just want to get this review out to you guys because I'm like, man, this game is so good. I've really been enjoying it and I really want you guys to, you know, catch my enthusiasm for the title and also like cover as much as I can without, you know, like spoiling anything because that's a, I, I know the game leaked early and, you know, the endings out there and all this information's out there, but I just wanted to give you guys a chance to know what you're going to get into along with being able to you know check out a review that's not going to spoil it for you so with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure you like the video sub to the channel if you haven't already and also ding the notification bell and if you want to support the content that we do i'm a one-man channel like I, I run everything on my own the podcast the reviews on the website you know along with these videos here on and tutorials and everything like that so if you want to support what we do we got uh channel memberships here on youtube along with patreon over on patreon.com slash mikhail casanova and we also have merch on teespring and tea public but with all that being said i hope to see you guys in the next video i'll put out stay safe be blessed and uh go to aloha i'll see you on the next one Peace. All for your time. If you found this episode to be incredibly enjoyable, informative, or if there's anything you gain from it, or any insight, or you know anything that's good that you really, really enjoy, make sure whatever platform you're listening to it on, or if you're watching it, leave a comment if that's available on the platform. Like it, share it around with someone you think would enjoy it, and give us some feedback because your feedback is exactly what we need to keep this show going. And if you're wondering what are some ways that you could support the show we got various ways we've got patreon we have channel memberships over on youtube as well as subscribe star coffee and so much more links for everything will be in the description check that out and with all that being said i hope you have an aloha rest of your day let them know that i'm next level i'm a whole new kind of guy Gene. yeah Is at the top spot in case you forgot. We the ones that got the black hot bullet, got the shot.